Speaker. I call Grant Robertson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. A as other colleagues have acknowledged, the Labor Party will be uh, supporting this legislation. As colleagues in the House know, uh, we attempted to put before the House a bill that would have allowed Red Peak to be added to the referendum, along with our clear and consistent position that that should be preceded by a yes-no uh, vote. We have said from the outset that as the public mood uh, rose up in support of additional options, that we wanted to support more choice. And I, for one, am pleased that New Zealanders will have more choice, and that is why we are voting for this legislation. But I want to reflect on what this process could have been, Mr Speaker. The opportunity to discuss New Zealand's identity, our sense of place in the 21st century, what kind of constitutional arrangements underpin a country like New Zealand growing and going forward into the 21st century. That is a conversation New Zealand needs, and I believe it is a conversation New Zealanders want to have. The government dipped its toe in the water of that conversation with the Constitutional Review Panel, also chaired by John Burroughs, who chaired the Flag Consideration Panel. Uh, Professor Burroughs is a learned and good person. That Constitutional Review Panel's recommendations have essentially just been put in the bottom drawer and locked away by the government. They're not interested in having a proper conversation about this. As a country, had we had that conversation, talked about the place of the treaty in our future, talked about our constitutional arrangements, about whether we feel strong enough to move towards what I personally believe we should in terms of being a republic, how we organise ourselves. And as part of that conversation, Mr Speaker, inevitably we would have been discussing the flag and whether or not the flag should change. But there has been no commitment to that process by the national government. The Prime Minister has lifted out from that conversation a discussion about the flag. And that, Mr Speaker, on, to my mind, is a huge disappointment. Because in the absence of that wider conversation, I suspect in March next year there will be no change to the flag. There are some people in this House who will be very pleased that that will be the outcome in March next year. I'm actually not one of those people. I'm actually a person who thinks we probably could change the flag and probably should change the flag, but it needed to be part of that wider process. <coughs> and in the absence of that, what we are left with is an attempt by the Prime Minister to create for himself a legacy. Well, I've got news for the Prime Minister. Our future constitutional arrangements, our identity in the as a country, is not about him. It is not about his ego. It is a not about a vanity project for him. And I think it is a huge shame that this process, which could have been part of something so useful for defining ourselves as a country in the 21st century, has been derailed by the Prime Minister's approach throughout this, and I am very sad about that, Mr Speaker. Um, Mr Speaker, I want to say a couple of things about, about how this piece of legislation has found its, its way to us today. Uh, I acknowledge that the Green Party, uh, in putting this bill forward, uh, has the aim of increasing choice for New Zealanders in the referendum, that we should not ignore a large movement of New Zealanders who wanted something more, and I think that is important. As I say, we too were attempting to put that legislation forward. There is no way, and we have not tried to hide, the disappointment of the Labor Party in the way that this happened, and in particular in the fact that as part of putting this forward, a deal was done between the Greens and National to not support Labor's supplementary order papers. That is extremely disappointing to us because we don't think, if we're trying to avoid political game playing, that that is a genuine and straightforward way of approaching this issue. Having Having said that, Mr Speaker, we have a good relationship with the Green Party. We have a lot in common. We have a lot of issues that we will continue to work together on. And whatever happens around this piece of legislation, I know that that relationship can, will and should endure. What I do know is that on the other side of the House, we have a Prime Minister who is now completely desperate about his referendum, because only two weeks ago he told New Zealanders there was no chance 
of Red Peak getting on the, on the ballot. None whatsoever. He repeated it. His very good and close friend, Paul Henry, said to him, Prime Minister, I want you to clarify, absolutely, will Red Peak end up on the referendum? And he said, no, it won't. We're not going back to Parliament to change the law. They're the exact words. We're not going back to Parliament to change the law. So what does the word of our Prime Minister mean? What does it mean to New Zealanders now if the Prime Minister says something? Because in two weeks he can flip around. And we know why, Mr Speaker. Because his, he listens to Jerry Brownlee. He's desperate, Mr Brownlee, because his referendum is on the skids. 70% of New Zealanders don't want to change the flag. And so the Prime Minister has taken to going to any venue in the country to run his flag process through it. In the bizarre situation of the Prime Minister standing up at a cancer fundraiser and asking the people there to raise their hands as to whether or not they support the referendum. And then those who don't support the referendum, the Prime Minister begins to interrogate them, berate them about the fact that they're not supporting the referendum. This is how desperate John Key has become. Because John Key wants a legacy, Mr Speaker. John Key wants a legacy, and that legacy for him is to change the flag. Well, Mr Speaker, he would be far better off getting a legacy of lifting children out of poverty, or getting a legacy of ensuring that every young New Zealander grows up in a warm, dry home, or getting a legacy that unemployment goes under 4%. They would be legacies to be proud of, Mr Speaker. That would be a Prime Minister who knew that a legacy is not so much about him, but about how he leaves the country. But this Prime Minister doesn't understand that. All the legacies he wants are about him and how he thinks he will be remembered. Well, Mr Speaker, he is going to have to exercise enormous political capital over the next few months to try to get this referendum through. And I think he will. I think he will spend millions of dollars, probably, of taxpayer money going up and down the country over the next few months, desperately trying to get himself his referendum passed. And that's the irony, Mr Speaker, is Red Peak, the very thing he said he didn't want, the very thing he said wouldn't be on the ballot, is the thing he now is clutching onto as his saviour. I've said in this House earlier in this debate, Mr Speaker, I think it's a better flag than the others. I know others don't agree with me, but I think it's a better flag than the others. I personally, as I've also said, think that the flag probably should change as part of that wider constitutional conversation. But every member of this House knows that when they go out back to their constituencies, when they go to public meetings, that that TV3 poll that says that 70% of New Zealanders don't want the flag to change is accurate. Every member of this House knows that when they go back to their constituencies. Jerry Brownlee doesn't. The good people of Ilam are apparently completely out of that, completely outside of that. It could actually be possible. Who knows what happens in an electorate that elects Jerry Brownlee time after time? They could be, they could be, saying, they could be saying anything at all, Mr Speaker. But, Mr Speaker, that is the truth, that this government, and in particular this Prime Minister, have destroyed an opportunity for New Zealand to have the conversation we need to have about our future identity because of vanity, because of ego. And now in his desperation, he accepts that there needs to be another option. I'm pleased New Zealanders will have more choice in this referendum, Mr Speaker. We support the bill because we believe New Zealanders should have more choice. We also wanted them to have the real choice of whether or not they even want to change the flag. I'm disappointed that didn't get through. This has been a completely unnecessary process which typifies what has been a shambles of a referendum. The government has failed New Zealanders once again.